All right, reader, here we go. Coaches out, everybody out. It's a players only meeting. And we are pleased to be joined by Chris Tanev, now of the Dallas Stars. How you doing, bud? Good, man. How are you guys? Awesome. Doing good. Doing good. Thanks for joining us, man. Uh, how's it going? How's Are you in Dallas right now? Yeah, we got in uh, Sunday morning at like 6, 6.30 in the morning. Our flight landed. So oh. um, been here for like a day, day and a half, sort of just getting adjusted and uh, sort of I feel it feeling the city out it was at the practice rink today so it's uh definitely different but um really excited and the family's excited as well wait why why did you get in so i guess late or early in the morning was that we, a uh, planned trip well we played la saturday and then it's i think we we flew out at midnight it's a three hour three hour flight two of our time I'm changing and an hour oh. forward for the oh. spring forward clock. So it was a, oh, it was a long night. Well, thanks for not uh, sleeping through this. We really, really appreciate yeah, it was, you having you out. Oh, my goodness. Well, you'll enjoy Dallas because I, I played three years in Dallas, and, and I can always remember the flights into Dallas and the, the winds and the storms and the weather in the spring. And I had that in Toronto. I always it, felt like it was like that coming to Toronto. Just just the, the I think crazy. it's the it's 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 same everywhere. Yeah. Like, uh, I mean, Calgary, is now, Calgary, yeah. Was, Calgary was bad, too, flying yeah. over the mountains. But. Oh, yeah. Well, so, so you'd be used to But I, I can remember we come into Dallas, and you could see the electricity in the sky as you're, as you're descending, you know, coming in. Well, because the storms, I mean, this was yeah. late 90s, so it was, it was pretty cool. But that, that was always cool coming in, and the storms coming in. They'd be like, okay, guys, it's going to be a little bumpy coming in. You're, again, you're 2, 3 in the morning, right? It was, all, it was always pretty cool. Yeah. Well, we made it, though. Every, ter every trip. Come I was, on. I wouldn't it was even, fun. I wouldn't. <laughs> got it. I wouldn't. You got it. The, the electrical storms were always fun. Well, I mean, so, Chris, Chris, you you got to be relieved somewhat to an extent, right? I mean, your name has been out there for so long with what was going on in Calgary, and now you join this team where, I mean, I know I think that, I mean, you have as good a chance as any to win a Stanley Cup. Can you Can you talk us through that process a little bit, how the last few weeks in Calgary went? Yeah, I mean, it's sort of the whole year has been been a, a long year. Um, I think from we got off to a bad start in Calgary and a week into the season, I, I sort of every time I turn the TV on, watch a game, uh, someone's talking about me. And it's definitely a weird feeling for me. Um, never, never got traded before, never really been in, in rumors at all. And um, the start of the year was tough. Uh, tough to deal with sort of any time even you're at home you watch a game someone on Sportsnet's talking about you or, or something like that and um the last few months have been a lot better I think so I just put it behind me and, and wanted to go out and have fun and and, and play play good hockey and um team started doing better and that always helps well it's always fun when you play in Dallas because when you finish practice you get out and the weather's always good that was always Fair fun. Enough. So you're going to experience that. That's going to be a lot of fun. Hey, you kind of had a, an unconventional path to get into um, National Hockey League and college hockey. Um, we were chatting, uh, Boyle and I, before the show about where we read up that you, you took a couple of years off and you didn't play like at, and, and at pretty significant ages. Can you kind of fill everybody in as to uh, how that happened? Because everybody's like, oh, if you're not playing trip play when you're eight years old or nine years old, you're <laughs> never going to make it, you know, and, and you you weren't necessarily that player that um, was like trip play all the way through. And, you know, kind of can you kind of explain the path that you uh, you followed to get to the National Hockey League? Yeah, uh, definitely, definitely different than, than a lot of guys sort of definitely my own uh, path. But I mean, I was I was tiny as a kid, so um, grade ten and eleven, I sort of sort of going into grade ten, I was like five feet tall. Um, got cut from a bunch of teams in in AAA, and um, ended up just deciding to to not really play competitively. Um, skated with my high school a little bit, and we I mean sort of had like a single A level, house league level team. Um, and just hung out with my friends for for two years and i en ended up growing um like a foot from when i was 16 to 17 cool. which was uh which was definitely different and and um sort of my dad pushed me to stay and uh and go and try to play junior eight two years later after i sort of stopped 
playing competitively at all and um made a junior a team and played uh was called the durham fury played like a year and a half there then went to markham waxers and um ended up getting a scholarship at, at rit and played a year there and signed uh signed in the nhl with vancouver that's a that's great, just yeah. a crazy like i'm coaching little kids now i coach the eight-year-olds and just the whole club hockey you know 2015 and, and, and you know reader did it too when when your kids were younger oh you yeah the youth hockey and the parents and it just it's so unique and i love telling people stories like yours because i just want the kids to go enjoy the game yeah. they're going to get better have fun and that's just a great way to tell them like doesn't really matter right now as long as they're enjoying it so i'm glad you told yeah. it to us here because now i can i can prove it to them hey if you're going to make it you're going to make it yeah. you know and you've right. got the skill and then you got the will to do it and then you're a perfect example uh, of that that's a that's a tremendous story and and you know there's there's a, a number of guys with family members in the league you have obviously your 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 brother in uh, Seattle can can you just explain yeah. to me or anyone at home what's going on with his headshots do you <laughs> has he discussed that with you is that a spur of the know. moment thing uh, I know I don't know when the first time he did it but someone showed me it and I was like what the hell is he doing <laughs> and uh um now i guess he's he's been doing it ever every year since and and people always ask me if 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 i would ever do it and that's uh that's his thing and we're we're very uh we have very opposite personalities so um <laughs> he's uh he's a little more outgoing than me and, and and doesn't shut up and i'm really i'm more quiet and reserved and uh sort of keep to myself a bit and um but he's he's gone with that now for whatever it has been five or six years and uh i don't know why he keeps doing it but <laughs> he keeps doing it all right so if you're the quiet reserved one who initiates the contact when you're playing against them I and mean, you play against each other in the west regularly so you've seen each other enough um uh, you know who, uh, who who gets the better of each other chirping and stuff when you guys are on the ice oh i mean he doesn't shut up so for sure him um yeah and he he'll run around a little more than than i will out there but um he yeah he's he's more physical than i am i would say too so i mean he'll if he if he's going to get a chance to forecheck me and, and get a lick on me then uh it, it definitely would be be him initiating stuff for sure but big big brothers a little calmer just one little you got to put him back in place sometime i'm sure yeah, yeah. Once, once in a while, you know, when I've had when I've had enough. But um, for the most part, he's just he's always nipping at my heels. You know, it's cool. You guys, you guys have the same barber too, huh? That's pretty neat. How does that work out in yeah, this, during well, the he season? Didn't, yeah, he just the barber just flies back and forth. We have him on retainer. So, That's you know. nice. That's good. Uh, so you. You've done well so far in your start. You got you, you got the goal off. Uh, you're off the Schneid with you scoring a goal on your new team in Dallas. I had uh, that was always a worry of mine when I got traded. I got traded a couple times, trying to get that first goal. I remember I went to Toronto, and I'm still waiting to get that first goal in Toronto. But um, <laughs> you fit in really well, right? You've how's it been uh, from a playing on the ice standpoint? Is it does it make sense to you? Is it an easy team to transition into? Honestly, it, all the guys have been been awesome. Um, coaches have been great. So, um, sort of talking me through everything. That our systems are extremely different than than how we played in Calgary. So, um, just getting used to that and um, playing with obviously a different partner and playing with uh, Lindell most of the time, who's a hell of a player. Um, really really good skater very smart so it's it's been easy to play with him um from my end for sure and uh, i i definitely appreciate sort of everything the organization's done from from the ownership down uh it, it's it's meant a lot number three how do you uh end up with number three i mean dallas doesn't have a lot of numbers in the rafters but uh uh did you have a choice of numbers it's always interesting to see how guys end up you know with the number yeah, um... when they get to a new team yeah, I mean, I've wore eight my my whole career, pretty much. My my rookie year, I was eighteen, but um, I sort of when I got traded, I I had no no idea that um, eight was retired, and um, 
the uh, the equipment guy or the or the media guy was like, "Hey, um, Mr. Neil said you're gonna wear number three. Are you you fine with that?" I'm like, "Yeah, that that works. That works uh, for me." And I made a little comment that it looks like half uh, three looks like half of an eight, and people thought I was an idiot because <laughs> I can't do math. Because they thought I thought I meant that three is half of eight, but. Um, I thought it was awesome. Anyways, I thought it was yeah. awesome. I, makes I, sense. I, yeah, no. It makes a lot of eight. sense to me. Yeah, you look at it. It's cut, half of eight. You cut eight and a half. Yeah, it's a backwards three and a... I'm cool. right there with you. I, I, whoever... Yeah, people are people are mean. Um, can you talk about kind of what you're... you're like, if, if someone doesn't know your style of game, like, what are you bringing on the ice? How did you get to that point? Were you like that kind of when you came back into playing hockey when you were playing junior A or into college? Did you adjust it when you turned pro? Like, what, what's your A game that you want to bring? Yeah, I mean, I think I've, from where I was in junior and college, is definitely different than than how I play now. Um, I mean, in, in college, I was running the power play and and uh, putting up putting up a lot of points and and definitely more of a skill game. But um, I think right now I've, I've as I my early years in 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 the league, I sort of um, adjusted to be able to to stay in the league and, and have a role and and now I I think I've I've done the same thing for for quite some time. Um, I try to play against the other team's top players, um, break pucks out as as best as I can, and um, move pucks up the ice and and get up the ice. I mean, I'm not. Obviously not the most creative player offensively, but I, I think I'm really good at breaking the puck out and and making little plays that maybe the, the average uh, fan might not notice. But um, yeah, just trying to play against the other team's top top guys, PK, break pucks out, get get pucks up to our forwards. I mean, that's that's sort of what I've been doing now for a long time. The shot blocking has become legendary in our discussions oh. a lot, watching you play in the games you played. Um, uh, and congratulations. It's, it's, it's an art in the game that you don't always see at the head of the stats, but uh, the, everybody playing the game understands how important that is. Interesting, I, I'm not sure if it was you who had said it or someone had said it, you've only played really in front of one goaltender most of your career, and that's Markstrom in Vancouver and Calgary. How was the transition to Dallas with different goaltenders? Because uh, uh, it's got to be... Um, I mean, that's pretty special to be yeah. as long as you played and have that relationship. Uh, kind of, can you explain to us the good and the bad of having that relationship with one goaltender and, and understanding how to play with that goaltender? Now your little bit of changes in Dallas, how that's going to, um, you know, how, how you see this kind of transitioning into the goaltending tandem in Dallas. Yeah, I, I was extremely fortunate enough to play with Marky for 10, 10 years, basically. Um, my first few years in the league, we had, Bobby Lou and Schneids and um, some some really good goalies, but then um, yeah, the last ten years basically been Marky and he's he's a hell of a goalie and and we've we've we have such a great relationship and and such good friends off the ice. But um, just knowing, I mean, little things. I mean, playing the puck, me and him. I th I think we were. I didn't even need to talk. He didn't need to say anything. We we were always on the same page and knew whether I was going to come pick the puck up or, or go to the corner. We were we were pretty dialed in with that. And on the PK, you know, I where I'm going to be to block a shot. If it goes by me, it's going to go short side. So I always had the far side of the net. You know what I mean? Just just little things like that. And um, now now in Dallas with Ottinger and, and Wedgwood. Um, both both really good goalies. Um, obviously, Otter's uh, last few years been been incredible. He sort of reminds me of Marky, his stature. Both both really big guys um, take a lot of the net up, and and Wedgie's a little smaller, but um, very athletic and, and gets gets across well and, and reads the play. And he, he, as I saw, he made some great saves in in LA the other night. So. Um, yeah, just a, a little bit different, but they've they've been awesome with communicating to me, and um, yeah, I, re I really appreciate that. Yeah, you'd have to go back when Schneider was back there and help him out, huh? He didn't really want to fight around <laughs> too much. Sorry, Corey. I know he's probably watching. No, I mean he. <laughs> no, Schneider was uh, Schneider was awesome. Yeah, Bobby Lou didn't really want to play it too much, but.
<laughs> Sometimes it's a good thing when they don't want to play. I At least prefer, you know. I prefer goaltenders not to play the puck. At least you know. Like a, a, it's like you know what? Because usually, well, we who was it yesterday in uh, Carolina? Anderson. That wasn't a good play. We gotta, we gotta, Freddie, yeah. we gotta give Freddie yeah. a break. Got, though. He's been off. No, we're gonna give him a break. Come yeah, we're gonna give him. That's a break. Break. I, Listen, I am anti goalie more than anyone else. <laughs> the game was the game was seven to two. Kuznetsov was minus one. Guess what goalie was on for? Well, he's just happy to be there. Well, that doesn't. Let's go. Goaltenders shouldn't play the puck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna. That's another card. There. Yeah. We're gonna switch gears a little bit here. We're gonna show you a few photos or maybe short clips, and the segment's called okay. "What Were You Thinking?" And essentially, just tell us. It's not like in a bad way. Just tell us what you were thinking when you see what the clips are, right? So here we go. Right. Number one. What do we got? Do you remember this? Yeah, I think it's my first goal overtime against Edmonton. Um, yeah, play on the ice with the Twins, fortunate enough. Took me a while to get my first goal, but um, super excited, uh, especially to get a Two assists from uh, two of the best guys in hockey, Danny and Hank. So it was uh, an extremely happy moment for me. So it's you from Sedin and Sedin in overtime. Yeah. Yes, overtime winner. I was, uh, it was first goal took me like 60 games to get it. So I was, I was happy I got it. Oh, that's awesome. That's a great shot. That's fantastic. Yeah, that is. What was that? What was that room like when you went in there? I mean, I know you had played a couple games, like a few games, uh, the couple of years prior to that. What was it like going into that dressing room? There's some characters in there. Yeah, no, it was awesome. They had really, really good leadership. I mean, starting from from those two guys, their their work ethic and then how they um, conduct themselves on and off the ice. Or, um, I mean, second to none. And uh, and then you had guys like Bieksa and Ham Hughes and um, Kess and it was an, uh, an older team. I think uh, my f my first year when I played like half the year and then and then playoffs. I was the I was the only guy under 25, maybe I think. So um, definitely an older team, but they they treated me um, incredible and and sort of showed me the ropes. Manny Malhotra, another guy, huge great pro, um, sort of taught me how where to go for dinner, what to wear. Uh, took me shopping because they had uh, some tough clothes. So I mean, <laughs> just just little things like that 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 they uh, all all those guys in in their each way. Um, I looked up to them for sure. Right on. Well, we got uh, we got more here. What's uh, yeah. what do we got next? This one here is probably my favorite. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Our, this uh, is so. <laughs> Is this where Manny Malhotra? Uh, is this where Manny brought you Manny. when you were shopping for clothes? Yeah, that's what uh, Manny brought us to just buy overalls and no shirts after. But um, <laughs> this was uh, I think it was Naz and Z's idea. But um, we I think we took a lot of heat after it on the on the on the internet. But um, we got we got smoked in the game too, which didn't help. But um, yeah, but you yeah, got those overalls. Definitely, those are awesome. Definitely, uh, yeah, overalls were nice. The no oh, shirts were, I mean, that's Alberta. I guess hit or miss, depending on who, who you ask. Yeah, that's Alberta right Where'd there. You, Come on. Where'd you get the boots? I went to, um, it's a great question. What's one of the stores in, in Calgary? I went in and said, I need some boots and, uh, Tried a few on, and I was like, "Oh, these ones are the, these these are the ones." And uh, <laughs> right. walked out of there about ten minutes later. All right, so so you you've gone from uh, you've gone from Western Canada, Calgary, which is the cowboy boot and cowboy hat capital of the country, to the cowboy boot and cowboy hat capital oh, yeah. of the United States, to Dallas. So you, your boots and hat are going to fit in really well. Yeah. Although the white hat, you can't wear yeah. the white hat. I was told you you got the white hat is in the spring. I suppose you can wear it now. Black hats. Okay. For the winter only. That's what I was told. Oh, well. Okay. Yeah. Peter I didn't know that. So. Peter's that's good. That's, that's just, good to know. I'm just saying. So you don't have to throw the boots out. You can wear them in Dallas. Those, those aren't cheap, days. those boots. They don't give them away. Uh, all right. We got this one here. Yeah. This one might actually, this one is my favorite. Because I've seen this a few times. Oh, jeez. Oh, what? Not, you, hey, maybe <laughs> what was your wife thinking on this one? If you're watching that one. Like, ouch. I... I think she was sleeping, actually, to be honest with you. Oh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think it was like a one. It was like a one-one game, and with three minutes left, and uh, someone got beat off the wall there, and I was just, 
I don't know. Just trying, trying not to lose, wow. you know, trying to win, trying to win hockey games. Probably, probably not the, uh, smartest idea. I got extremely lucky. Didn't, didn't break my jaw or anything. Just had a nice cut. And, um, yeah, as I said, fortunate, lucky, really probably stupid play by me, but, um, yeah, but ended up working out. You know what? That's, um, they talk about endearing yourself to your teammates. Ah, that's leadership right that, there. That, yeah, that was just a bang, bang play. You know, it's almost like a one-timer for a shot blocker. It's like you got to move, you got to get in front of the shot, and you just jump in front of it. I, I remember that's, watching that live just being yeah, like, that's, this is a guy I would want on my team. Oh, yeah. A hundred times out of a hundred. It really, I mean, and I, I get it. It's, it's not the smartest thing to do, but you got a guy like that on your team. You better get going. Yeah, but honestly, you're not really thinking when you're there, right? You're just like, I, I got to get, I got to get, take part of the net away. I got to try to block this shot. Like, where yeah, you, I mean, like, it's just, yeah, you're not, you don't have, you don't have time to think. No. I'm just trying to try to get in the way. I mean, if I, if I, if I don't know, if I go feet first, maybe he probably just walks around me and it's a, a, a backdoor tap. And so, I mean, um, just honestly, just trying to get a piece of it and, and help our goaltender. Oh, that's awesome. That's good. Uh, we got one more here, I think. One, yeah, one more. Oh. Um, I I think that might be Kyle Turris. I don't know Bingo. for sure. Oh, yeah. but I think... Here it is. Oh, that's a good. Yeah, hit. I don't. That's a good. I'm. Uh, I wouldn't say I lay the body like that too much, but maybe once once a year I'll I'll catch someone uh, pretty good, and I sort of feet. Puck was in his feet. I don't think he he was expecting me to hit him like that, but um, ho hopefully it was all right after. Oh, Those yeah. are the ones where it was a great clean hit. It was hear, shoulder to the chest. You hear the air come out of their chest when they hit the ice? I always He liked popped it. up. Yeah, I don't know. I love, that was a great yeah, hit. Yeah, you got it up. a nice guy. I like that guy. He's a good Don't guy. skate through the middle with your head down. Oh, no, head up, kid. The National Hockey League. Great hit. <laughs> um, hey, listen, go take a nap, man. <laughs> I can't believe you got in at 6.30 in the morning. Thank you so much for joining us, spending some time with us, and letting the people know kind of what makes you tick. I really appreciate your time. Oh, thanks, guys. Uh, have a great day and all the best. You too. Enjoy oh. Dallas.